In today's video, we're going to be installing the GTA 5 police mod called LSBDFR in the year 2023. There's only a couple of things that have changed over the last year. Now, this will be a fast and simple install, so stick around. You're not going to want to miss today's video. Welcome back, everybody. I truly hope you're having an amazing year for 2023. And I decided to timestamp this video for easy viewing. The first half of the video is going to be a manual install for LSBDFR, and the second half of the video is going to be an auto installer for LSBDFR, and I'll explain the difference between both of them in today's video. The next step is to log into GTA 5 in story mode. You want to allow it to connect to Social Club and download any kind of necessary files. And then also, please note, you need to get past the prologue first with uh, Trevor and Michael, and they go through that entire heist at the bank. And then also Franklin and Lamar, their first mission as well, because LSBDFR cannot load properly unless you're on a free roam state. So once you're in a free roam state, you're able to walk around and you're not on a mission. Then you pull up your cell phone. Then you want to save your game and that will be your next save point. Go ahead and close the game and let's continue the next step. Now it's important to note that LSP Fire base mod itself does not require script hook. A lot of people think that it does, but in fact, the base mod LSP Fire does not require script hook. I think what people are really saying is that their trainers, their vehicles, their other plugins for LSPDFR do require script hook. So therefore, we'll cover that in another video. If you look down below, the link will be there for script hook install if you're curious on how to install that. And then also my other plugins that will come out in year 2023 will be linked down below. Okay, let's hop on over to the main site, which is lspdfire.com. I'll be sure to provide a link for you down in the description as well as the pinned comment because sometimes this link is kind of hard to find on their website. And then also please note that the version number will change throughout the year as well as the build number. But for now, this is the way it's going to be installed throughout the entire year. Now let's click on download this file. It's going to be the top right. The, uh, you're going to notice there's two different kinds of installers. But the first one is going to be the auto installer. The one below that is going to be the manual install. So I'm going to go ahead and download both of these. And I'm going to cover that in today's video. But you would just pick one that you feel more comfortable with. The auto installer or the manual install. I currently have two downloads of LSPDFR on my desktop right now. We have the manual install version, which is going to get covered right now in the first half of the video. And the auto installer is going to be right there. It's going to be the second half of the video. So this is going to be a timestamp in this video for the manual install of LSPDFR. Now, in my opinion, I think the manual install version is the most superior version of the two. And the reason why is because the manual version will always have the most up-to-date rage hook already included with it. Whereas the auto installer may have an outdated Rage plugin hook inside the auto installer. So let's install LSPDFR manually. Let's pull up our main game directory. If you're not sure how to get to your main game directory, it depends on where your GTA 5 is located at. Look to the top right of your video. There is a just a small video on how to find your main game directory for Epic Games as well as Retail and Steam. Now this will work for Epic Games. This will work for a retail version. Don't let anybody tell you different. It's all about pathways and folders. A look to the top right, it'll help guide you to the right place. So with that being said, we have our main game directory over to the left, and then we're gonna pull up the zip file for the manual install. And this is how hard it is. We just open up the zip file for the manual install. You're going to highlight every single file that you see there out there. Unselect licenses, you don't really need to install that. So if you drag these files, just like this, and watch how hard this is, just like that, and then let it complete. Usually takes about 30 seconds or less, depending on how fast your PC is. And you're done. You just installed LSPDFR manually, congratulations. And then also you know where your game folder is. So if you wanna install plugins, you already have a leg up over the people that are doing auto installers. So you wanna be able to get to your main game directory so you can install plugins, as scripts, and all kinds of cool stuff. But just be aware that the uh, plugins 2023 tutorial I should be linked down below sometime soon, so be on the lookout for that if you want to learn how to install cool plugins. Now, if you're really concerned about texture loss in your game playing LSPDFR, because LSPDFR is a resource hog, it loves memory, and there's a lot of things you can do about that. And what I've done is I set up a Patreon account. If you look down at the very bottom, you'll see my Patreon page there. I set it as low as possible, and then I've done some really good tutorials on there. It'll help get your graphics back, uh, mainly your textures everything under control again. So be sure to visit that site. Okay, now that you installed LSPDFAR manually, look to the very bottom of your screen. There's a timestamp on the screen itself that will guide you to what to do with Ragehook. 
how to load Rage Hook, how to get into the game, how to load LSPDFR, how to go on duty, how to create a police character, things like that. So be sure to go to that timestamp down below and I'll see you over there. Okay, welcome to another timestamp. This is going to be for the auto installer for LSPDFR where you just click on one button and you go through the install process and we're about to do it together. If you're looking to install this manually, really easy, really fast, only takes a couple of seconds, then look at the timestamp down below. It'll guide you to the manual install version of LSPDFR to make sure you have an updated Rage Hook along with the manual install. Okay, let's click on the auto installer that's on my desktop right here. Now, I would encourage you to probably think about if you're having trouble installing this is to turn off your firewall for now if you're having trouble with this and also turn off your antiviral software. It will prevent those programs from blocking your files. So for me, I already have everything kind of unblocked. Uh, most users will probably have that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and double click on the EXE and it'll give you a little uh, flag right there that it is an EXE. We're going to click on yes. Okay, we're going to click on English. We're going to go to next. And then make sure you read the uh, disclaimer here. And then uh, go ahead and click on next. Uh, these will be automatically defaulted. And then it will find your main game directory for you. So we're going to go ahead and click on install. And then you're going to click on finish. It will automatically be checked right there. And then it says welcome to the LSPDFR configurator. The uh, configurator will guide you through the initial setup of LSPDFR. Advanced users can skip this. For now, we're going to go to next. And you'll get a little pop-up right here. It says change settings. It says we recommend disabling the version text rendering and setting all plugins to load at startup. So you may want to go ahead and click on do it for me. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And it's already been installed. And that's all there is to it with the auto installer. We're going to click on OK. Now let's go back to the main game directory. This is where your GTA 5 is located at. And now this is where your Rage Hook is located at. If you look real close, you're going to see a file right there called rageplugginhook.exe. We're going to right click and we're going to send that to desktop. Now, Windows 10, you'll have the option right here. Windows 11, we have to go down to show more options and then you want to go to send to and then go to desktop right there. Now, once you've done that, uh, you can close out of your main game directory because you don't really need it at the moment. But what I did was I pinned mine down to my taskbar. If you really look close, You'll see it right here and I can click on that button and fire up Rage Hook, which is what I'm about to do. I just fired up the Rage Hook for the first time on this particular uh, clean install of GTA 5 with LSPDFR and I got this popper right here. I think this is something new that they're doing Rage Hook. I'm not 100% convinced that it is brand new, but it is something that I'm glad they're doing. So this will allow your Windows firewall to allow these DLLs to get through so that you can connect uh, and play LSPDFR. So you can see right here, it says Rage Plugin Hook has detected that the following files might be blocked by Windows. Blocked files may cause crashes or other malfunctions. And you'll see there's a whole laundry list full of DLLs that we need in order to play LSPDFR. So right here at the very bottom, you'll notice it says, do you want Rage Plugin Hook to unblock these files? And my answer is going to be yes. Now, if you don't see this message, uh, don't let that worry you. Maybe you need to reinstall Rage Hook in order to get this message again. It's always possible. Uh, this is kind of something new they're doing with Rage Plugin Hook. But I'm going to go ahead and click on Yes and allow it to do its thing. And then it's going to go through a little process of reading the disclaimer. So if you feel comfortable uh, reading all that, uh, we're going to go ahead and click on Yes. Now your Rage Console key when you're in game uh, is going to be the F4 key. You're going to be typing a few things in there from time to time. And it's just important to note your Rage console key is going to be F4. Now the plugin timeout threshold has to do with how much time do you want to allow Rage Hook to load into the game and load all of your plugins. So what we're going to do is change that to 60,000. Uh, that will be one full minute uh, to allow all your plugins to install correctly. If it loads faster, then that's great. Mine usually gets into the game after about 30, 40 seconds roughly, and I have a, a pretty decent PC. But if you are on a low end PC, make sure this says 60,000 and that will save you a lot of crashing right there. The next step is pretty vital. So this uh, is a very, very important part of the video. I'm going to timestamp this as well, is uh, dealing with the Rage menu. So we're going to go to plugins right here. And this is the reason why a lot of people do not see, you know, their PlayStations whenever they load into the game. There's a reason for that. 
because if you go to plugins, it says don't load any plugins on startup, meaning LSPDFR when I get loaded uh, with Raychook. And sometimes that could be a good thing. Sometimes it could be a bad thing. Uh, personally, I kind of like the idea of not having anything loaded until I get into the game. The new rave that most people are doing these days are by clicking on don't load any plugins in startup, leave it as default, and then you're going to save and launch your game in just a moment. But for now, I would just leave it just like this. We can load it inside the game, and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. But if you go to game settings, if you are having some crashing with uh, LSPDFR, Raid Shook, these kinds of things, go to command line switches right here at the top. Uh, if you scroll down just a little bit, uh, force windows mode is a really good one, in my opinion, because a lot of PCs have issues with programs like this. So if you click on uh, force windows mode, uh, it will load into the game in window mode. But there's a little trick you can do with the alt key plus the enter key, which we'll talk about in just a moment. It'll get you right out of windows mode and you're right into full screen. So in my opinion, I think it loads a little bit better if you click on a force windows mode, uh, then that's about all you need to do on that part. We're gonna go save and launch. And you'll notice this dialog box right here. So what they're saying right here is that you can get back to the Rage menu by double clicking Rage plugin hook and hold down your shift key for about two or three seconds. So for now, let's go ahead and save and launch. By now you should be seeing some words floating across the screen. That's a good sign. Uh, that means your PC is just kind of accepting these things right here. And you notice it's loading story mode, but not really story mode like you think. It's going to be loading uh, into the game, just like right now. It looks like we're in story mode, but we're really not. Hold down your left alt key and press enter. It'll get you right into you know, full screen mode right there. So what we got to do is if you try to go into your Rage console right now, if you press F4, start typing in load plugin, press tab, and then you notice it's already spelling out LSBD first response, press tab, and notice it's ready to accept the entry, and then you press enter, and then you wait for a second. It will load up. It usually takes a few seconds. So it looks like we should be on duty, right? But we're not. So what you can do, there's a couple of things you can do, is if you press your F4 key again, if you're out in the world, if you type in force duty, so notice it's trying to spell it for us, press tab, and if you press enter, uh, it will seem like we're gonna be on duty. We haven't gone to the PlayStation yet. So the game doesn't even recognize our character yet. So we have to create a new police character. If you type in go to PD, you can press enter, and it will automatically teleport you to the nearest PlayStation. Another little trick you can do is if you uh, press escape key, you'll notice that uh, you have a new tab right there called LSPDFR. If you click on that, but you can click right there. It says go to nearest PlayStation. You can go to your apartment or you can view your stats. Sync has to do with your stats, keybinds. I'm not gonna talk about this too much, but if you press your entry key, you'll notice your keybinds right here, yes. And then we're going to go back up to character and we're going to click on go to nearest police station. Let's click right there and then press enter. There we go. It's got teleported. Now it'll teleport you just to the nearest PD. Uh, there's really not a rhyme or reason like where you need to go. But if you look at your map now, you press escape. If you kind of zoom in a little bit, you'll notice you have some different icons in your map. That's a good thing. That means that LSP fire was loaded correctly. So we're going to go down here. Uh, Franklin's getting rid of his crime life. We're going to go right into the PlayStation. And you can go to any PlayStation at the front door. If it's Mission Row, you have to go through the doors. And then you have to go to the locker room. So if you click on Go on Duty, if you press Enter, it will ask you to select a character. Uh, you need to select a character to use LSPD FAR. And it kind of it states it right there. So if you press on, if you press Enter, uh, it will go into a locker room now. And then you will need to create your first police character. And uh, I won't spend too much time doing this, so I'll probably fast forward this and we'll come up with just a male character of some kind. And once you got your character named, you wanna click on enter where it says use. Then you'll get to another menu right here, police locker, police garage, or go off duty. So we're gonna go ahead and just click on police locker room and then you can go down here to outfit and you can start arrowing over to the right. They don't give you a lot of variation with the police locker room. Uh, that is why the EUP really shines. If you're really curious about how to install EUP, 
that is the emergency uniform pack just look down below there is a tutorial that i did you can literally install a huge uniform pack you know full uh, access to a wardrobe in probably under 30 seconds that's how easy that is to install the emergency uniform pack so be sure to check out the tutorial link down below Here's a quick tip guys if you're just loading into the game for the second time you've already created your character and you just want to get on duty as fast as possible what you do is press your f4 key and then if rage hook has not loaded lsbdfr then what you could do is you can load it yourself once again load plugin press tab and then start typing in lsbd press tab key press enter and then it'll take just a couple seconds to load if you have a lot of plugins it will take probably about 45 seconds roughly to load all of your plugins that is associated with LSPD first response. You can now type in force duty and press enter. Uh, you will now be on duty. Go to the bottom left of your screen. But I just wanted to kind of show you how to install LSPD first response for year 2023. Hope you got some benefit out of today's video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. Let me know if it helped you out, guys. I really do appreciate all the support of the channel. You guys are awesome. And we'll see you in the next patrol. Stay safe. Thank you for watching Benzo's YouTube channel. Be sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Benzo uploads often, so stay tuned for the next episode.